Good afternoon. Please be seated. That's Latin for turn your cell phones off. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to San Diego State University's 2013 commencement ceremonies in the College of Arts and Letters. I am Joseph A. Smith, Associate Professor of Classics and your commencement Grand Marshal. This is indeed a long-awaited and joyful celebration, but it's also among the most momentous and serious occasions in the lives of these men and women. And so for the next hour and a half, we ask your most respectful attention for the sake of all graduates and guests who wish to cherish the memories of this day. Now I'm pleased to present the Dean of the College of Arts and Letters, Dr. Paul Wong. Good afternoon, candidates for graduation and guests. Greetings from the faculty, staff, and administration of the College of Arts and Letters. I declare this commencement now convened. Please rise as the Army, Air Force, ROTC, Color Guard presents the colors and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem led by Ms. Sasha Weiss of the School of Theater television, and film. Please be seated. This is a great and memorable moment in the lives not only of today's graduates, but of you who come to witness the passage and proudly cheer them on. For parents, this means the satisfaction of knowing that 20 or more years of striving and caring and no doubt sacrificing for a daughter or son now have reached some closure. For spouses and children, this means some 3,000 hours when a very important member of the family simply had to be left alone. For other relatives and friends, this means recognizing one whom you have loved and one whom you will also now admire. Those of us who have also come to know your graduate congratulate you 
on your support and encouragement. In your own way, you have joined with the faculty and staff of this university in making possible the awarding of these degrees. And for this, on behalf of the College of Arts and Letters, I extend our cordial appreciation. I now present San Diego State University's Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Ethan Singer. Thank you, Dean Wong. It is my pleasure to introduce the following colleagues and guests in attendance today. Please stand as I call your name and remain standing until all have been recognized. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Student trustee of the California State University Board of Trustees, Mr. Cipriano Vargas. Vice President for Research and Dean of Graduate Affairs, Dr. Stephen Welter. Acting Vice President for Student Affairs, Mr. Eric Rivera. Chair of the University Senate, Dr. Bill Eady. Representing the SDSU Alumni Association, Ms. Lois Bruin. Soloist from the School of Theater, Television, and Film, and hitting every high note in the Star Spangled Banner and every sick commencement, Ms. Sasha Weiss. Associated Students President, Mr. Robert O'Keefe. Associate Students Executive Vice President, Ms. Chanel McNutt. Associate, Associated Students Vice President of External Affairs, Mr. Gilbert T. Rivera. Associate Students Vice President for University Affairs, Mr. Ma Matthew Cecil. Please join me in welcoming these individuals. Thank you, you may be seated. Now, some of you may be wondering, where is President Hirschman? Well, Dr. Hirschman is in Ohio today, and he is attending the commencement of his daughter at Muhlenberg College. But we are most fortunate to have with us, as she is always with us, our provost, Dr. Nancy Marlin. Good afternoon. It is my great honor to join our entire university community in congratulating our graduates. I wish to acknowledge the effort and support of the many family members and friends who make this day possible for our graduates, and of course, our dedicated faculty and staff who have taught and mentored our graduates. Today is a special milestone. Reaching this milestone has required substantial personal sacrifice, and in this process, you have grown personally, professionally, and intellectually. For all of these reasons, we pay tribute to you today. In academic tradition, graduation is referred to as commencement. Thus, today is a beginning as well as an ending. Today, you join the proud tradition of San Diego State University alumni. This tradition is first and foremost one of leadership and service. Our alumni serve our region and our nation and our world by creating and building businesses, teaching the next generation, making scientific and creative contributions, advancing professions, and serving in government and in their communities. In all these fields, our alumni are innovators, entrepreneurs, and leaders. Now, as always, our society faces significant challenges, and it is your turn, your turn to serve and lead. We are certain that the hard work, intelligence, and perseverance that helped you succeed here at San Diego State University will ensure your future success and that of our society. Congratulations. Thank you, Provost Marlin. I wish now to introduce today's commencement speaker. According to our tradition in the College of Arts and Letters, our speaker is selected from the ranks of our retired faculty. 
Professor Weeks is a distinguished professor of geography and director of the International Population Center at San Diego State University. He's also a clinical professor of global public health at the University of California, San Diego School of Medicine, a senior fellow of the California Council of Science and Technology, and a research associate of the Broom Center for Demography at the University of California, Santa Barbara. He holds a doctorate in demography from the University of California, Berkeley, from which he also received a bachelor's degree in sociology and master's degree in demography. He has published more than 130 papers and chapters in peer-reviewed journals and books, and has authored or co-authored numerous books, including the best-selling text in a field of population studies, now in its 11th edition. His research has been funded by millions of dollars in grants from private and public sources, including the Andrew Mellon Foundation, the National Science Foundation, the National Institutes of Health, and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. He attributes his academic success to 40 years of teaching the fantastic students of SDSU in the College of Arts and Letters. First in sociology, where he chaired the department for seven years and for the past 21 years in geography. I am pleased to welcome Professor John R. Weeks as today's commencement speaker. Professor Weeks. Thank you, Dean Wong, and uh, hello to uh, Provost Marlin, colleagues, guests, and of course, all of you graduating today. Congratulations to all of you. Today, we honor you who have studied on this beautiful campus, indeed a bigger and nicer uh, campus over the years. I know this not just because I've taught here for 40 years, but in fact, uh, my mother graduated from San Diego State when I was in high school. So I first started hanging around here more than 50 years ago. I am definitely a part of a long and proud Aztec tradition. Many of my friends from high school also graduated from here. And as I'm sure you know, everywhere you go in San Diego, you will find our alums, that group uh, into which you are now graduating. You will always be a part of us, and we hope that we will always be a part of your life. When I was an undergraduate at Berkeley back in the early 60s, I needed a job, just as I know many, if not most of you, uh, needed a job while going to college. So I went to the campus employment office and indicated that my main qualifications were that I was a sociology major, I could speak a bit of Spanish, I could type, and I knew how to run an adding machine. Okay, this is, this is a long time ago. And, and by the way, those, those skills, those last three qualifications were skills that, that I had acquired in high school as part of my objective to always keep options open. Always keep your options open. I, I drill my students on that as well as my children and my grandchildren. Uh, open every door that you can. Learn languages and skills that will take you places even if you're not sure where those places are. Because, to quote the Roman philosopher Seneca, success happens when preparation meets opportunity. So I was prepared when the opportunity came to be hired by a faculty member in sociology. Before I took the job, I, I asked a graduate teaching assistant uh, in one of my classes who Kingsley Davis was. And I thought my TA was going to flunk me on the spot for knowing that this guy who was about to hire me was in fact the president of the American Sociological Association. He was a member of the National Academy of Sciences. And in fact, he was arguably the most famous demographer in the world at the time. So that little job was the second most important thing that ever happened to me. And I'll tell you in a minute what the most important thing was. I went to work for him as an undergraduate and then worked with him in, in graduate school, getting my doctorate in demography under his tutelage. 
So with his guidance and following his pattern of an incredibly intense amount of hard work, I began to make progress on my personal goal of understanding how the world works. In population studies back then, everyone was concerned about high birth rates. To be sure, this was the era of Paul Ehrlich and the population bomb. But actually, the more dramatic change quietly taking place all over the world was the decline in mortality. We didn't go from just one billion people alive only 200 years ago, which is just a mere blink of an historical eye, to more than seven billion people now just because of high fertility. Rather, it was the decline of death rates that produced population growth, since people don't immediately stop having kids when they realize the children are going to survive rather than die early. And of course, we, we like little kids. Now, why do you care about that? Because this dramatic improvement in life expectancy over the last century has transformed our lives in immeasurable ways. Think about this. A century ago in this country, life expectancy was in the 40s, and less than a third of babies born survived to age 65. Now, life expectancy for females in this country is 81 years, and virtually everyone survives to age 65. We don't give much thought to death until we get older, and that has given us scope in our lives that was unthinkable in human history until actually about the time I was born. That might just be a coincidence. Uh, it may seem as though this makes us the luckiest people in the world, but it isn't luck. It all comes back to the unprecedented increase in education that's been taking place ever since the Enlightenment took root in Europe in the 17th century. Getting more and more people to understand the classics, philosophy, history, geography, and overcoming tradition and superstition in order to expand scientific endeavors, including the sciences that have allowed us to control death and live these long lives. Okay, so you've got a longer life ahead of you than anyone who came before. And by the way, an even longer life expectancy because you're well educated than if you had failed to get the degree you're being awarded today. Each year of education turns out to add to your life expectancy. What are you going to do with these bonus years? Well, that's where an old timer like me comes in handy because I've, I've been around the block. I know what's out there. And I promise not to quiz you on this, but you might want to pay attention anyway. Here's my number one lesson in life. The more you give, the more you get. I didn't grow up knowing this, but I learned this lesson from my wife, who was my high school sweetheart, and marrying her was the most important thing that ever happened to me in my life. And from her lifelong friend, an SDSU alum, by the way, who has based her life on her mother, grandmother's simple premise. Cast your bread upon the waters, and it will come back sandwiches. The more you do for others, the richer your life will be. My number two lesson in life, the strongest steel goes through the hottest fire. Test yourself. Put yourself out there. Take chances. Not stupid ones, of course, but uh, thoughtful chances. Figure out what the worst case scenario is, and if you can live with that, then charge ahead. In the process, remember that, as Cicero said, the skill to do comes from doing. Now, that's perhaps most obvious when we're talking about things like sports or music, but in fact, it applies to thinking and writing. Don't let others do your thinking for you. Pay attention. Gather the facts. Honestly assess then what is true. We've spent a lot of time here at SDSU trying to get you to learn how to think critically and write well. Keep those skills sharp by practicing them daily. Keep a diary. You'll appreciate it more than you can imagine when you're my age. Now, one's, numbers one and two are the biggies, but there are a few more lessons worth paying attention to. To be honest, none of these is original. 
In fact, I hope you've heard them all before because then there's a greater chance that you'll put them into practice. You may know the old Zen saying that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. What's also true is that teachers sometimes come in unexpected packages. For example, I, I love my dog, and I find that I learn important lessons about life from him. Reminding me of what the writers uh, Max Weinstein and Luke Berber think, you would learn if a dog were your teacher. For example, we would learn to be a better and happier person if, number one, when loved ones come home, you always run to greet them. Number two, avoid biting when a simple growl will do. Number three, delight in the simple joys of a long walk. And number four, if what you want lies buried, dig until you find it, wherever that leads you. Now, you're ready to find out where life is going to lead you. And that brings me to my final lesson. Always remember the many people who've helped you to succeed. Many of these people are here today, and we have a tradition in the College of Arts and Letters begun years ago uh, as a way of saying thank you and to show our respect and share the joy as well as a little bit of relief for the things that you have accomplished. So to continue our SDSU tradition, would you stand up, turn to the audience, come on, stand up, pay attention now. <laughs> turn to your family and friends, cheer, whoop it up, whoop it up. Family and friends, you too, whoop it up, whoop it up, can't hear you. All right, all right, good. Good job, congratulations and best wishes to you all. Thank you, Professor Weeks, and please uh, be seated. I now present the Chair of the University Senate, Dr. Bill Eady. As this day marks, for many of you, the end of your formal education, it also marks the end of the formal careers of some of your professors. Although they may have relinquished their classrooms, they will continue their careers as scholars and as valued contributors to the university. The faculty through the Senate customarily honors its retiring colleagues with the title Professor Emeritus. The names of our new Professors Emeriti are included in your program. I would now like to introduce the distinguished faculty members here today and present on the platform from the College of Arts and Letters. Please rise and remain standing. Joseph W. Ball, Professor of Anthropology, 38 years of service. Lawrence Barron, Professor of History, 24 years service. Elizabeth Caldwell, Associate Professor of Women's Studies, 23 years service. David Matlin, Professor of English and Comparative Literature, 15 years service. And today's speaker, John R. Weeks, Professor of Geography, 38 years service. On behalf of your students and your colleagues, I thank you for your contributions to San Diego State University and extend our best wishes on this next chapter. It is fitting at this time to pay tribute to the San Diego State University students who have put their educations on hold in order to serve in the U.S. Armed Forces. We also want to thank the student veterans who are here today for their service to our nation. Would you please stand and be recognized? We, we thank you and we appreciate your sacrifice. 
It is also fitting to remember our fellow faculty and students who we lost in the past year. Their names appear in the commencement program. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. I now present Dr. Stephen Welter, Vice President for Research and Dean of Graduate Affairs. And with this, uh, we'll start to switch to the portion for the conferral of degrees, starting with the doctoral degrees. The degree of Doctor of Philosophy is bestowed upon those who have demonstrated an extraordinary knowledge in an academic field and a capacity for original intensive research. The degree requires coursework equivalent to at least three full years of study, further years of research, and completion of a dissertation in a specialized field. Provost Marlin, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. A complete listing can be found in the commencement program. Candidates and their professors, please rise and walk to the podium as your names are called. Norman Dale Carter, candidate for Doctor of Philosophy and Geography, dissertation advisor, Associate Professor Fernando Bosco, dissertation titled, The Struggle to Create a Residential Community in Downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> Denise Marie Gurish, candidate for Doctor of Philosophy and Geography, dissertation co-advisors, Professor Stuart C. Aiken and Assistant Professor Catherine Elizabeth Swanson, dissertation title, Smart Cookies, the Gendered Spaces of Labor, Citizenship, and Nationalism in the Girl Scout Cookie Sale. <laughs> Marta Jankowska, candidate for Doctor of Philosophy and Geography. Her dissertation advisor is John Weeks, and the dissertation title is Integrating Space, Place, into Children's Perception of Environmental Health Hazards in Accra, Ghana. I also want to note, though, that Marta is not with us today. She's working on, actually, a very important piece, which is she's currently in labor. Um, I think this is just a physical tribute to the fact of how productive our students are. <laughs> um, I'm afraid I don't know the title of her latest project. Um, I also would like to um, have you join us in sending best wishes out to Marta. Nicole Elizabeth, <laughs> Nicole Elizabeth Simmons, candidate for Doctor of Philosophy and Geography, dissertation advisor, Professor Peter Jankowski, dissertation title, Improving Emergency Management Response to Wildland Fire Events. Sarah Marie Wandersee, candidate for Doctor of Philosophy in Geography, dissertation advisor, associate professor Leanne, dissertation title, Land Cover and Land Use Change in Human Environmental Systems, Understanding Complex Interactions Among Policy, Management, Local Livelihoods, and Conservation. <laughs> Alex Ivan Zoloff, candidate for Doctor of Philosophy in Geography, Dissertation advisor, Associate Professor Leanne. Dissertation title, Understanding the Dynamics of Changing Land Use and Land Cover, Population and Climate in the Chitwan Valley, Nepal. <laughs> Provost Marlin, these candidates having completed their doctoral studies have been recommended by the Graduate Council to receive the, their degree of Doctor of Philosophy. The Doctor of Philosophy, the PhD, is the highest earned academic degree awarded by universities in the United States. San Diego State University is pleased to cooperate with other universities in California in offering doctoral degrees. Our participation in this traditional hooding ceremony signifies the exceptional recognition given by the Academy of Higher Learning to students who have earned this degree. Upon recommendation of the faculty, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the California State University, I confer upon you the Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights, privileges, and responsibility pertaining thereto. Please hood our colleagues.
Congratulations. Please be seated. And now we'll start with the conferral of the master's degrees. The Master of Fine Arts is the highest degree obtainable in various applied studies of the arts. Today we recognize in a special ceremony the MFA candidates who have completed their studies. Provost Marlin, I have the honor to introduce the candidates for the degree of Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing. Ajani Akita Brown. Um, so Sarita Dix Martin. Caitlin Brian Dyer. Amy Lynn Fagent. Ryan Allen Forsyth. Michael Galvis. Rachel Elizabeth Gelman. Susan Ashley Cecilia Hogan. Erica Nicole Johnson. Jeffrey David Priest. And Annette Yvonne Robichaud. Provost Marlin, these candidates, having completed their studies, have been recommended by the Graduate Council to receive the degree of Master of Fine Arts. The Master of Fine Arts, the MFA, is the highest earned academic degree awarded in the creative arts. Upon recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the California State University, I confer upon you the degree Master of Arts with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Please hood our colleagues. Congratulations. You may be seated. Thank you. San Diego State University also offers master's degrees in 76 different programs, including the arts, letters, and sciences, and in professional areas. Candidates for the master's degrees you please rise and remain standing as your degree is called. The Master's in Asian Pacific Studies, the Master's in History, the Master's in Liberal Arts, Master's in French, Master's in Philosophy, Master's in Interdisciplinary Studies, Master's in Chicana and Chicano Studies, Masters in Latin American Studies. Masters in Spanish. Masters in Linguistics. Masters in Rhetoric and Writing. Masters in Comparative Literature. Masters in English. <laughs> Masters in Sociology. Masters in Economics. Masters in Anthropology. Masters in Women's Studies. And Masters in Political Science. And Masters in Geography. Provost Marlin, I had the honor to present the candidates who have completed the requirements for the master's degree. 
They've been recommended by the faculty and graduate council to receive their degrees as listed in the commencement program. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the California State University and upon recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the master's degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Please be seated. We will now proceed to the conferral of the bachelor's degrees. <laughs> Candidates for the bachelor's degrees will be presented by Dean Wong. In the College of Arts and Letters, undergraduates earn the Bachelor of Arts degree in Liberal Arts and Sciences. It is my pleasure to introduce the December, May, and August candidates for bachelor's degrees. As I call your degree, please stand and remain standing. Bachelor's degrees in African American Studies, American Indian Studies, Chicana and Chicano Studies, Latin American Studies, Linguistics and Japanese, Asian Pacific Studies, Classics and Humanities, European Studies, French, German, Russian, and Russian and Central European Studies, Spanish, Religious Studies, Philosophy, Social Science, History, American Studies, Comparative Literature, English, International Security and Conflict Resolution, <laughs> Women's Studies, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Studies, Anthropology, Sociology, Geography, Sustainability, Urban Studies, Economics, Political Science, International Business. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> I am most pleased to recognize those students whose academic achievements have earned them honors for outstanding scholarship. Students graduating with extremely high GPAs, cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude, are listed in the university commencement program. You may also identify those graduates who have earned our highest academic honor, summa cum laude, by the gold honors braid worn over their robes. Will all those students who are graduating with honors cum laude, magna cum laude, summa cum laude, please stand and be recognized. Congratulations, you may be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Samuel Charles, Charles Spivak, who has earned the distinction of Outstanding Graduating Senior 
in the College of Arts and Letters. Members of the class of 2013, as chair of the University Senate, I congratulate you on your achievement. Provost Marlin, by action of the University Senate, and yes, we took a vote on this, the faculty approves and recommends awarding the degrees listed in the program. All candidates for bachelor's degrees, please rise. Okay, listen carefully. These are the words you've been waiting to hear. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the California State University, and upon recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the bachelor's degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. It is with great pleasure I present this diploma to symbolize the awarding of bachelor's degrees to the entire graduating class of the College of Arts and Letters. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Provost Marlin, <laughs> Vice President Singer, Dr. Edai, and Dean Wong. On behalf of the class of 2013, I am proud to accept this diploma, and I bid a grateful farewell to San Diego State University. It is customary at this time for all bachelor candidates to move their tassel from the right to the left side, symbolizing the moment of graduation. Please join me. Thank you. Please be seated. I think you can understand why commencement is for me one of the best days of the year, a day of celebration and of pride. I hope that each of you will embrace the wonder of this day and thank those who have supported you. You have accomplished much and we are exceedingly proud of you. Having attained a university degree, I hope that you will continue to learn and to grow, that you will strive for noble aspirations, that you experience joy and ultimately that you will become the person you hope to be. I recognize that some of you may feel uncertainty about your future at this time. This is perfectly natural and appropriate. I can, however, assure you that no matter what the future brings, you are prepared. You have accomplished much. You have the capacity to learn, to grow, and to meet the challenges that we cannot even envision today. And finally, I hope that years from now, when you sit in a ceremony like this, celebrating the achievements of a child or a friend, you will be able to look at your own life with the satisfaction that comes from knowing you have endeavored to make this world a better place, endeavor to elevate rather than diminish the human spirit, endeavor to discern the movement of human advancement, and that you have been a contributor to it. Congratulations. One of the finest college recognitions is to be selected from one school as the outstanding graduate. In turn, these students select the most influential faculty member of their academic career. This reciprocal recognition is greatly respected. Let me introduce to you, to these fine graduates and faculty, please remain standing and hold your applause until all are introduced. Africana Studies, Terry James Siffers, 
and Associate Professor Adisa L. K. Bulan. American Indian Studies, Ginger Renee Rogers and Associate Professor David Kemper. Anthropology, Samuel Charles Spivak and Professor Elisa J. Sobo. Chicana and Chicano Studies, Jenny Marie Westwood and Assistant Professor Victoria Gonzalez Rivera. Classics, Joseph Stephen Ramirez and Associate Professor Joseph A. Smith. Comparative Literature, Ashanti Charlotte Visite and Professor Darlene Emily Hicks. Economics, Stanley John Grausick III and Professor Jennifer Imaseki. English, Megan Carroll Lodasol and Associate Professor Claire Colquitt. Geography, Shannon Nicole D'Agostino and lecturer by Anna Richardson. German, Tracy L. Lawson and Associate Professor Mary Ann Walkup. History, Tyler Gerald Russell and Professor Matthew S. Kiefler. International Business, Marin Martinez Hoffman and Professor Charmu Sundaramurthy. International Security and Conflict Resolution, Katie Suzette Martin and Miss Stacy L. Sinclair. Japanese, William Charles Honecker and lecturer Asuka Kurotani. Latin American Studies, Daniel Isaias Martinez and lecturer Robert Guzman. Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Studies, Alisa Marie Baker and Assistant Professor Douglas S. Bigham. Linguistics, Samuel Charles Spivak and Assistant Professor Gregory Keating. Philosophy, Elizabeth Lorraine Travis and Associate Professor Mark R. Wheeler. Political Science, Karen Melissa Marujo and Professor Emeritus Edward V. Heck. Religious Studies, Alicia Rose Jones and lecturer Laurie Albert Stewart. Social Science, Robert Ian Fermania and Professor Edward Beasley. Sociology, Shauna Rose Goodman and lecturer Paul T. Sam Jr. Spanish, Saeed Alicia de Leon Gonzalez and lecturer Jose Luis Mendoza. Urban Studies, Lindsay Taylor Loy and lecturer Order F. Eckhart. Women's Studies, Laura Roberta Ortiz and Professor Puma Ahmed Ghosh. We ask the parents and families of these outstanding graduates to rise and share their recognition. Thank you. Please uh, be seated. I'm now very pleased to introduce your SDSU Alumni Association representative, Ms. Lois Brennan. On behalf of San Diego State University, I welcome you now to the ranks of the university's more than 280,000 alumni. We are pleased to honor you on your commencement day, and we want to remind you that SDSU Alumni Association will always be here for you. As you make your transition from this campus to the greater community, we hope you'll stay connected with SDSU by joining your alumni association. And remember, wherever your success may lead you from here, you'll always be an Aztec for life. Congratulations. <laughs> Let us all stand now for the singing of the alma mater, led by Ms. Sasha Weiss, 
The words of your alma mater may be found on page four of the commencement program. seated. Our thanks to all who have contributed to this commencement. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and administration of the College of Arts and Letters, I extend best wishes to our graduates for full and happy lives and successful careers. To the families and loved ones of all our graduates, we recognize your love and support. We share with you your pride in seeing years of great effort now happily about to be fulfilled. We salute you and ask all parents, grandparents, spouses, children, and other relatives and friends to please stand and receive our sincere appreciation. I now declare these commencement ceremonies concluded.